Today we are building the Sword of the Ruined King, Diego's sword from League of Legends. This is a seven foot tall monster of a prop with full internal lighting. The whole thing glows in this like teal minty color. In my last video, we built Magic Sword from Marvel Rivals, and this is kind of like that times 10. If you're interested, that video is on the Hoku Props channel and linked below. So first thing is always reference, and League has a ton of different character art with some pretty huge differences in everything from character page to the cinematics. In my mind, game files are always the best because that's kind of the main touch point for players. So like, I feel like this is Viego much more than this is Viego. And those are two totally different swords. So I poked around and found modelviewer.lol, which has, I think, all champions downloadable as PNG you can export, uh, STL, and GLB files. And you can even separate items individually, which is huge. Uh, this is like an insane tool. So I brought that into Blender and started modeling. Now League has pretty low poly models. So I took a lot of artistic liberties with the smaller details and the curves, but here's how it started. And here's how the model looks before we start engineering. Okay, so I have five main goals for this build. One, it should split apart for transport. Two, I want a high density cob LED strip around the entire perimeter facing inwards. Three, we need to avoid seams and infill like the plague since it's gonna block light and it's gonna show through. Four, electronics and batteries have to be internal and hidden. Five, we gotta have a durable metal inner structure. This upper blade I wanted to do entirely on the CR30 print mill. So it's just one giant piece. And that's gonna take like two days of printing per side minimum. So everything else is going on the Bamboo X1. I want a half inch aluminum pipe going from the very top all the way down past the bottom so it overlaps with another larger pipe in the bottom section. To give us easy access to the inner edge for the LEDs, I'm using a Boolean operation to cut this big channel all the way down. And this goes through the entire model. It's basically making like a 0.2 inch gap about an eighth inch from the outer edge. This section was really not cooperating, so I split it right at this corner. In the center here, I'm putting this big cavity where all the wiring can be connected from the batteries below to the wires coming from everywhere else. These spiral pieces are gonna be separate and not illuminated, but they will cover up this seam. And finally, we have our bottom hook, and this is where our one inch pipe terminates. I cut out this small square section where the battery holder, uh, the switch, and an adjustable buck converter all fit inside. That's the model. Now it's time for color testing. So this is Jerez Pet G and Jade. I got this purely because of the unique color. And I also got a bunch of these Cobb LED strips. Uh, the greens were just too green and the cool white with the Jade Pet G looked really good. Now I've seen a few people use white PLA for light up props because it has great diffusion, but I found that it just blocks way too much light unless it's really thin, which ends up being really weak. With this design specifically, the light is passing through six perimeter walls, so white is out of the question. And the reason we're using Pet G is just for the strength. Our electronics are basically the same as the Magic Sword. We have four generic 18650s in a printed battery holder, and the leads go down into this adjustable buck converter so we can adjust brightness. You do need a multimeter to adjust voltage on here, but my preference is always brighter. Yeah, it just looks so much better on camera. But if we lower voltage, we can get way more battery life. Now finally, with everything printed, we can get to assembly. So right here, I'm placing down my LEDs on the upper blade and terminating them at the top. So the power lines go down through this center support tube. This is probably the most challenging part of this entire build. I have to fit these LED strips into these like tight corners with a bunch of random coat hangers and plastic sticks. It's a lot like making a ship in a bottle, but really the hardest part of this is there's some leftover support material deep in these crevices and I ended up taking them out with threaded rod. This little piece. So I'm getting ready to glue these two halves together, but I'm really paranoid about having the LED strips damaged during assembly. So all of my solder joints are hot glued down and I'm gonna keep the power on while I clamp this thing together. Now the glue I'm using is a Gorilla Heavy Duty Construction Glue and I really don't see many people using this. It has a really thick consistency so it bridges gaps really well, like big gaps. 
It doesn't shatter in the way that super glue or epoxy sometimes does. And if you get it on your parts, it's a lot easier to clean off. Most importantly, it's clear. There are some small spots here that are covered by gems, so I'm taking a soldering iron and melting the seams together. With that drying, I wanted to get started on the lower assembly. So I ran out of this jar as jade, so I switched to some Overture Clear Pet G and did some color tests. So I found out that a really light coat of Createx Candy 2O Tealicious mixed 50-50 with emerald green gave me an almost perfect match. So I started using this to build up saturation around the edges instead of shading. I'm also using this on the side swirls, but I don't want the entire sword to be mint green. I want some kind of variation, so I'm going heavy on the gems and some of these other parts. Then I kept fishing the wires and LED strips through the entire lower assembly. To terminate these strips, I'm using micro JST connectors, which are small enough to fit into my LED channels. And I really like these, I use them all the time. With all that done, I took this over to Hogu Props for a coat of 2K clear. Now we went really heavy with the clear in an attempt to seal up all this rough printed surface. And we're almost using this like a transparent filler primer. After curing, I started sanding with mostly 320 grit, just blasting this thing with the Proxon. And then my beloved Ryobi flex shaft died, uh, which luckily they're sending me a replacement, but back on it with the Proxon. Then I came back for some final shading with the Tealicious Green mix around the edges. Finally, it's time for a clear coat and I'm running some UVLS matte through the Iwata TH2. And here are the final gems printed out of Sariatech Craft Clear. And now for the failures. And I really just wanna make it abundantly clear that this was not an easy project, not something I could just bang out. I had terrible print quality when trying to model these parts exactly how I wanted them printed. Uh, basically, I had trouble modeling a perfect 16th inch wall, especially through areas that taper. And that gave me these really ugly lines where the slicer transitions from like three walls to two walls. And I had a ton of stringing. So I was like, maybe I'll just make the solid shape like this and I'll print it kind of like in vase mode and I'll just cut an access port to lay my LEDs down. The major benefit of this is that the light would only have to pass through three walls instead of six walls. This ended up being ridiculously weak. When glued together, this might've worked out, but ultimately all of this testing is what led me to this profile. So this shape printed three wall vase mode, uh, the print quality was way, way better. Another huge issue is just working with a printer like the CR30. Uh, it's an experimental machine that is both wonderful and highly problematic. 
During this project, the belt slipped right off the rollers, the extruder gear fell off, my Bowden tube broke. Since then, I've done several upgrades like a linear rail x-axis, a new SKR motherboard, which can run clipper, but I still had lots of trouble printing the upper blade in one piece, especially with the zero infill. Basically, because this is printing at a 45 degree angle, this area right here is a complete overhang where the nozzle is just shooting into thin air. So I just had to print these parts separately on the bamboo. Another big issue is that despite modeling a much larger hole than necessary in my for my center beam in the upper blade, so my standard half inch pipe didn't fit. Now I panicked and bought some really oddball pipes that were slightly smaller than half inch, but they had an ultra thin wall. And this actually snapped while we were painting. So to fix this, I had to buy an even smaller pipe. This one is like a stainless steel schedule 40 half inch pipe to go inside of that. So now it's strong, but it could have been better. Mistakes were made. And I got kind of confused with how I wanted these overlapping pipes to be which is why there's a weird transition in the middle from a half inch pipe to a much larger gap in the upper blade. At first I wanted the bottom pipe to extend up into the upper blade so that this upper blade is smaller, but in order to get the necessary strength in the upper blade, I had to glue all of this stuff together. So the inner pipe and the halves really need to be one piece. The last big issue I had is that these cob strips were a little weak. Fishing these through the sword was actually putting a tremendous amount of stress on the joints. So on one hand, you really wanna burnish these down so that the adhesive is gonna stick really well. But on the other hand, you don't wanna blow these out. Ultimately, I do think this was worth the effort and I really don't think splitting the sword like down like this would have worked. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. I hope you guys like this build video. Let me know what I should build next. My top three videos that I really wanna make are why I think Createx paints are the best, kinda of like why I use Createx. Uh, if I could only have one airbrush, two airbrushes or three airbrushes and uh, 10 tips for the perfect spray booth slash finishing station. I'll see you in the next one.